Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about Yannick Sinner slingshot backhand. I'm going to explain later why I call it a slingshot backhand. But the fact is that Yannick Sinner has one of the most aggressive two-handed backhands in the history of tennis. I can compare it to Agassi or Nalbandian. The power that he gets out of his backhand is incredible. So right away, let's get into the technique. So Sinner has a very aggressive loading position. He has his hands quite low so he dips the front shoulder he creates a V formation between his upper body and his lower body he turns his back towards the other side and interestingly he has his racket slightly closed on the hitting side of the body when he takes his racket back now center happens to have a next gen two-handed backhand and I made a separate video that I want you to check out where I explain in great detail how the next gen two-handed backhand is different from the modern two-handed backhand and the main characteristic is that the next gen two-handed backhand has a timing that's very delayed so center waits on the hitting side of the body until the ball is very close most other players will have the racket further back at the bounce of the ball so at the bounce of the ball center is on the hitting side and he remains on this side as the ball starts traveling closer to the contact zone so what center does now next is something that's quite unorthodox and that's why I call it a slingshot backhand. So his backhand is different from the general next gen two-handed backhand because he doesn't stay on this side. He does take his hands closer to his body as the ball approaches the contact zone. So because he pulls his arm in and then accelerates forward, the racket ends up whipping behind his body, which creates a slingshot effect. Look, Sinner is not the only one who gets a lag that's further behind the body. This most of the time has to do with how far the hands are from the body. The further the hands are away from the body, the less the racket is going to go behind the body. But generally, players will gradually accelerate. So the racket will slowly loop and it will start picking up speed as it drops into this slot. And the acceleration is very gradual, going from slow to fast. Sinner's acceleration is very sudden. Why? Because he has a next gen two handed back end where he waits in this position as long as possible until the ball is very close to him. He then starts taking his hands closer to his body, accelerates, and he creates this slingshot effect where the acceleration is very sudden. One thing that's unorthodox about Sinner's swing path is the fact that Sinner is more left arm dominant. Now, one of the first videos that I've ever made on the Intuitive Tennis YouTube channel was about the fact that the two-handed backhand is not like a left-handed forehand on a right-handed player. The two-handed backhand generally is not left arm dominant on right-handed players. This is still very much true today. Most two-handed backhands are more right arm dominant. Now an easy way to tell whether somebody is left arm dominant or right arm dominant is to simply look at their swing path. If the tip of the racket ends up passing the level of the handle on the finish, that means that a player is more left arm dominant. If the tip of the racket never passes the handle and it's in a neutral position, that player is more right arm dominant if they happen to be right-handed. So the vast majority of players, including Djokovic, Agassi, and the list goes on and on, are slightly more right arm dominant because their tip of the racket never goes past the level of the handle. It stays neutral as they finish their backhand. However, if you look at Sinner's backhand, the tip of the racket comes around the handle on the vast majority of his finishes. So Sinner indeed, is more left arm dominant on his two-hander. Now in that video that I'm referring to, I named some players that are more left arm dominant and another player that's still on tour is Andy Murray. He happens to have a back end that's more left arm dominant. But these players, as I already said, 
are in the minority. Now I'm going to make a separate video on my other channel, Intuitive Tennis 24-7. If you haven't subscribed to that one yet, I'm highly recommending to do so because here I upload videos every day. Not only shorts, but also landscape videos that are a little bit shorter than long form videos on my main channel. And I'm going to release a video where I talk in great detail of how you should approach the two-handed backhand. Should you try to hit it more with the left arm or the right arm? I'll give you a quick answer now without an explanation that you should do neither of those things. But go over to Intuitive Tennis 24-7 and check out my video. I'm going to give you an in-depth explanation. But now back to Sinner and his left arm dominant backhand. I studied Sinner's backhand from juniors on, even when he was 11 years old. And it was very apparent that he didn't really use his right side much because his right elbow was always very close. To his body when he was very young he also had a separation between the hands and he would hold the racket like this with his off hand so generally the more your hands are separated you're naturally going to use your non-dominant arm more also if you happen to collapse your dominant side if this elbow tucks in naturally that left arm is going to take over and you're going to be more left arm dominant now of course as Sinner got older and i studied some footage when he was 14 years old and i studied those backhands and they became less left arm dominant with time the finish on Sinner's two-handed backhand improved and he is getting his dominant elbow much higher and he has a proper finish but still when he hits his two-handed backhand the hardest that left side still tends to take over and the tip of the racket goes past the level of the handle and it is a backhand that's more left arm dominant even to this day. How does Sinner compare to some of the greatest two-handed backhands in history? And in my opinion, Novak Djokovic has the greatest two-handed backhand in the history of tennis. And while I do think that Sinner has more power, naturally he is one of the best ball strikers that I've ever seen. He hits the ball harder maybe than anybody that I've ever seen. The only guy that I can compare him to is maybe Robin Söderling. Sinner hits the ball huge from the baseline, but I still prefer Novak Djokovic's backhand over Sinner's and possibly Zverev's backhand over Sinner's because while Sinner can hit it harder, he can hit these laser beam frozen rope down the line back end winners i value consistency more than anything else and i do think that novak Djokovic's back end is a tad more consistent than sinners and i therefore value it a little bit higher but of course i do believe that yannick sinner has one of the best two-handed backhands just based on its sheer shot making capabilities 